Hi, in this video, I'm looking at this problem here, which has got a particle moving with its position described by this vector equation. 5 cos 2t plus 1i plus 5 sine 2t minus 3j, where time the t parameter is in seconds and the distance represented by the position vector is in meters. And we're going to express the path that this particle is following in Cartesian form, and then identify the shape that that path is. So with this, as we can see, it's just a parametric equation. We've just been given more information. We're actually told that T represents time and the R represents position, and it's got units. So we just treat it as a parametric equation. So I know that the x component given to me by the y component of the vector is going to be 5 cos of 2t plus 1. And the y component is going to be given to me by the j component of the vector, 5 sine 2t minus 3. And now to get this into Cartesian form, I want to do whatever I can to try and link these two equations together. And because we've got trigonometry, we've got cos and sine, I want to try and use an identity because that most of the time works. And the one that comes to mind is Pythagorean identity, cos of a value squared plus sine of a value squared, where they're the same value, equals 1. Cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. And we can use this because 2t is what the value of both the sine and the cos are. So they do line up and they're the same value. So we just need to now get our x and y equations in the form of cos squared and sine squared. So if I start off with my x equation, I can subtract one from both sides, giving me five cos of two t, and then divide both sides by five, giving me just cos of two t but I need cos squared, so we'll then go and square both sides, giving me x minus 1 and 5 equals cos squared of 2t. Do the same for our y equation. We can have y plus 3 equals 5 sine of 2t. Divide both sides by 5 equals sine of 2t and then square both sides, and so we get y plus 3 on 5 all squared equals sine squared of 2t. So now that I've got my equations for cos squared and sine squared, I can go and substitute both of these into that equation. So if I go and substitute this information in to my Pythagorean identity, then I'm going to get, well, it starts off with cos squared. We just show that cos squared of 2t is x minus 1 on 5 all squared. And then we're going to add on the sine squared term, which we just showed is y plus 3 on 5 all squared. And then we can see that that equals 1. So now all I've got to do is tidy this up, and the thing that I don't like is these denominators on 5 and that being squared. So we can square the individual terms of our fractions, so that, that way we can break out the denominator. And then, because they share the same denominator, we can just multiply both sides by 5 squared, and that's going to leave us with x minus 1 all squared plus y plus 3 all squared. And that, instead of equaling 1, we're going to have equals 5 squared, because 1 times 5 squared is, of course, 5 squared. So now I've got my Cartesian equation, x minus 1 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 5 squared. And I can see from that that the shape of this is a circle, because this is the basic form of a circle. And it's a circle with the center at the coordinate 1, negative 3, and the radius 
being 5 because the values that are subtracted off the x and y give us the center and the right hand side squared is giving us the radius. So there we go. If we have motion given to us by a vector equation, we can still treat it as a parametric equation because that's what it is and convert it into Cartesian form and from that we can identify what shape we have that the particle is following.